It's my distinct pleasure to be joined in studio by my business partner, Kimon Freeman, who is going to be taking your calls with me. Kimon, thanks for joining us. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. So let's go right to the, uh, to the lines here. Mm. We've been talking about a lot of stuff. Um, so we've got a variety of uh, issues. And Darren in California, you're on the line. Yeah, yeah, I was saying, I really enjoyed the, the couple of Bruce and the other callers. It's, it's nice to see that people have some intelligence still. Um, what I want to talk about is very disturbing. I was listening to Stephanie Miller, and she said that Trump, he, 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 uh, he threatened Comey. Is that if he came out to push some videos that... Uh, he, he just said he better not come out with some videos, and and or I, I think he was talking about audio tapes, but it's a, he he seems to be he's not even hiding what he's doing. He fired you know he fired the FBI because he wanted to stop the the investigation. He's just I think he's grabbing power. Well, well is our only hope McMaster and 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 um, Mad Dog? Mm, no, I don't think that's our only hope. I think our only hope is the people uh, and that we're going to rise up and stop uh, Donald Trump, who is no master, uh, you know, like uh, he, he's in no way some political mastermind or anything. And he is uh, he is subject to the law. He is not above the law. I want to go through a little bit of what Darren was talking about because it allows me to make fun of Donald a little bit too. Because I will call him a ringmaster, though. I'll give him that. Yeah, he's. I mean, he's what he's always been. He's just like is impulsive and and he thinks he's going to get away with everything. But the system created um, Donald Trump and made it. Um, and the, the Republican Party laid the found a fertile ground for a Trump to rise up. And this is the fruits of their labor. And the fact that, you know, we, we're, we're having this type of uproar over the fine of, of, of the uh, FBI director, I wish we had the same response when the FBI said 10 years ago um, that all law enforcement in this country has been infiltrated by white supremacists, also known as ghost skins. Um, there wasn't a peep of about uh, uproar about that because you understand what I just said? <laughs> all law enforcement. But... We have the ringmaster um, running a circus right now, and he's turned um, American politics into a reality TV show. Yeah, but and it's not that good, is what I'm saying. Like, just the, rate, the ratings are the ratings are because <laughs> because people like uh, you know they they can't uh, turn away from a car wreck. I mean, like, so he fired Comey, and then his people he sent his people out to say uh, it was about Hillary Clinton's emails, and you know, like I I was like. And many people are like, well, it clearly wasn't about Hillary Clinton's emails. It's about mm -hmm. the ongoing investigation. And um, I was arguing with a, a, a smart conservative friend of mine on Facebook yesterday and today. And he's like, and many people have said this, but you can't know what's in Donald Trump's mind when he when he uh, made that decision. There's no way you can know what is in Donald Trump's mind. How, why, who do you... Hey, like, what information do you have that you're saying that they're lying, that the, what they're saying isn't true? And I'm like, well, first of all, it's obvious. And so a reasonable person would not think that it is about her emails because he praised Comey about her emails previously, right? And why now and all of that. And then there was able to be a discussion. And then Donald Trump went on television and said I was thinking about the investigation and Russia when I decided to fire him. Mm -hmm. And you're like, well, there you go. We now know exactly what his state of mind is. And that what that means is that that is more than enough for me to say that's obstruction of justice. That Absolutely. looks exactly like obstruction of justice to me. And that is an impeachable offense. Uh, at the very least, we need an independent investigation into everything. Well, good luck with the independent. But um, my grandmother used to say, you know, two plus two equals four all around the world. The only thing that changes is the language describing. The math doesn't change. You know, the fact is he stopped an investigation. That's it. I mean, there's there's no other way around it. That's the math. That's the facts. And so this, to to have a a red herring issue talking about we don't know what's you know, inside his mind. I don't care to know what's inside his do. mind. But we do. We know what he did. We also know what's inside <laughs> his mind. He's like one of the few people who you actually could say 
we know what's inside of his mind oh, because yeah, it's he called does. Twitter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, like, we literally, he, like, live tweets his impulsive behavior. You know? I would love to see a, um, Obama have done some of this stuff to see what the um, uh, the turmoil would have been. Just one, just, like, yeah. one I would have loved of to the tiny this. things that he has done. Uh, and, you know, uh, do you, like, do you remember when the scandal was, um, uh, when he had the beer Give me the the facts on that one, so I can. When remember. he bought the guy, when he bought the police a beer. Yeah, and I, I don't remember the names and everything. But do you remember that? That was a scandal. Yeah, that was a scandal. That he was bought, a scandal. When he, I thought that was him, you know, appeasing the FO, uh, FOP, because he said the this cops acted stupidly, so he was forced to buy the guy a beer and invite he, him to the he, White House. He he rightly said that yeah. the cops acted stupidly, stupidly. When they did what they do, that was his blackest focus. moments in his entire administration. I mean, he he said that, and then he walked away from the podium like George Jefferson. I mean, like that was that was my proudest moment of Barack Obama. And um, and that was a quote unquote scandal. And, and now, that was a scandal. <laughs> now, I mean, Donald Trump just can't help himself. That's why I uh, so Darren, I hear what you're saying, and the and the threat that he made against Comey on Twitter was he said. Uh, you better hope I don't have tapes of our discussion before you go leaking anything to the press, mm -mm -mm. which is obviously intimidation, right? I mean, and it is. That is very worrying. But, Darren, I think my confidence comes in from the fact that the people are outraged and paying attention right now. So, yes, there wasn't a peep at, uh, when there should have been, and there's yeah. often not a peep made when there should be, but right now, people are making a well, I'm glad to hear that because, unfortunately, Trump is the president um, that middle America deserves because um, they have for far too long turned a blind eye to a lot of corruption, a lot of injustices when it was affecting other people, and now they are feeling some of the oppression has been distributed. Uh, as Martin Luther King said, we, are, uh, we need to redistribute the pain. And so Trump is, uh, for better or for worse, he's the guy behind um, the curtain in the Wizard of Oz and he's been exposed. The emperor has no clothes. And now we get the opportunity to re-examine uh, capitalism and the system in America as it's been doing business. Because we should have had this type of uproar off Citizens United. We should have had this type of uproar um, eons ago on a number of issues. But here we are, and hopefully we'd be the better of it. And we, the, I mean, the only thing we can control is what we do. Mm -hmm. So the hopeful is uh, that, you know, we stay engaged and we, I, I pledge that. Mm -hmm. um, and out of chaos comes order. And, uh, or, or justice is what I'm more interested justice in. Justice would be even better. I'm more interested in justice. And I think, you know, I, I understand where Darren is coming from. I, I understand, like, and I'm not saying, Darren, I understand broadly. People who are scared right now, or, or feeling despair over this, um, and because don't be scared, don't get, don't be sad, don't be depressed, don't um, don't be discouraged. Be be mad, like in the movie the, the the network. I'm mad as hell. I'm not taking it anymore. Go to your windows, roll up your windows, and scream out to your neighbors. I'm mad as hell. And I'm not taking it anymore. That's the type of vibe we need. And then call your members of Congress. Do and something. Call, call your senators. Do something. Exactly. The tagline of We Act Radio. Um, Steve in Washington State, you're on the line. How are you doing today? Good. Thanks for calling, Steve. Hello? Yeah, can you hear us? Steve, we can hear you. I don't know if you can hear us. Can you hear us? Nope. Hello? Sorry, Steve, you can't hear us, so we're going to go to Sorry, Steve. Robert in California. Robert, you're on the line. Yeah. <clears throat> Hi, Alex? Hi. You're on the Hi, line with yeah. Kimon and Alex. Yeah, well, guess what? You know, I was thinking about, why, you know, the streaming problems, right? It's greed and, uh, you know, the fact that most men think women are inferior. And then also <clears throat> the religious thing where people are believing in invisible beings floating in the sky. Now, to be deluded to the point of thinking that women are inferior and that they're invisible beings, you can also be deluded into believing that Trump's okay. There's nothing wrong with him. So this is a problem. So how do we convince these Trump voters that they're wrong? Well, you can't. Just like, uh, you know, guys are talking about that it's like a cult. So what's the next step? The next step is everybody has to realize that these people – are not normal. I mean, it's a sad thing, but 
there's a lot of people in America there. Robert, wow. I, I take your point, and, you know, I don't think we need to write off anybody. Um, at the same time, I'm not interested at all in reaching out to a white nationalist, right? I'm not interested in debating the merits of a white nationalist's point of view, and I don't think that we need to at all reach out to people who aren't interested in, uh, it, in respecting the humanity of everybody and, and the policies that we pursue uh, that are focused on working families, uh, those are going to reach everybody uh, that we want. And the, so what I'm saying is we don't think about, like, how are we going to reach out to the Trump voters? We think about how are we going to reach out to the working families in this country? How are we going to make an economy that works for the people? The fact is, is that if this was a, a, a white country, um, we would have a lot uh, um, more equality. We would have um, a universal health care system already. We wouldn't have a, a prison industrial complex. We wouldn't have a number of things. Um, but because this is a multicultural society, um, there are racist um, um, roots that don't want to share those things. We don't want those people to have what we have. And that's the elephant in the room, and it needs to be addressed, because the fact of the matter is this is, this is not— a democracy, as former President Jimmy Carter said on this show, I believe. Come on, great point, and uh, thank you for your call. Um, we're going to take a break and uh, be taking more of your calls at 202-808-9925. Come on, is staying with us the entire hour, so give us a call, 202-808-9925. We're going to have a lot of discussion. It's, it's free-for-all Friday, so Jeff, give us a call. Uh, and we can talk about whatever you want. We'll be right back.